seeing a presence of a quorum, I'm calling to order this meeting of the Amherst Regional Amherst Pelham Regional School Committee at 6.31 p.m. on Thursday, July 1st. Um, and we will begin with um, uh, roll call attendance. When I call your name, please state present. Mr. Demling? Demling present. Mr. Harrington? Harrington present. Ms. Lord? Lord present. Ms. Spitzer? Spitzer present. Ms. Stancer? Stancer present. And McDonald present. So we are in order. Um, our first item, unfortunately, we did not get the revised minutes back. Um, so uh, we do not have uh, minutes to approve this evening. Um, and we have one public comment, um, which I will play. Good afternoon, Mr. Demling, Mr. Stanel, Ms. Kenny, Ms. McDonald, Ms. Lord, Mr. Harrington, Ms. Spitzer, Ms. Stancer, and Mr. Sullivan. My name is Carol Sherrington. I live in Pelham. My two daughters have the privilege of education in the Amherst Pelham Regional and Public and Pelham Public Schools. They graduated from ARHS in 2011 and 2014. I have worked at the Amherst Regional high school since 2009 and currently live in Pelham. I am calling on behalf of paraeducators in our public schools in all three of our districts, whether or not they are aware of your willingness to continue to negotiate with the education association with the goal of agreeing on a cost of living adjustment for a one year extension of our contract. We appreciate that you are persevering in pursuit of a number that not only moves toward a living wage for paraeducators, but also facilitates solvency and prosperity in our schools. As you may not know yet, the Educators Union is asking the school committee and the district to find just $100,000 to match the educators $100,000 that we need to contribute to an improved wage for paraeducators. I implore you during your executive session tonight, please come to an agreement to continue working with us and to support the effort to look for creative ways to manipulate the budget and keep it solvent and come up with $100,000 here and there, and we will put in $100,000 and we will be able to esteem these most important workers. Thank you very much for listening. So I've mentioned that was our only public comment um, uh, this evening. So uh, next up we have a uh, superintendent's updates. So I'll turn it over to you, Dr. Morris. Yep, I'll be quite brief. Uh, school ended, right? So uh, that, that makes the updates uh, a little bit briefer, uh, but just gives me a chance to acknowledge the the fantastic work done by all staff members um, to get through uh, the last school year. Uh, I'll say we're already hard at work uh, the next school year. Um, took a little break this week, but other people didn't. I'm trying to encourage people to take breaks, which they're not wonderful uh, necessarily about doing, but we're going to you know, really push people to do that. Uh, but we're hiring. I met with a number of candidates today um, to finalize our hiring process for uh, next year, outstanding people. Um, in a variety of different roles with elective special ed counseling uh, to replace folks who retired. I think the only other statement I'll make is we had a really nice event and Hala, thank you for coming uh, last Wednesday night. Uh, it was an event for retirees um, and years of service and clerical media awards. It's, you know, I, I know I talk about it every year. It really is just about my favorite event every year, but uh, Hala, I know got to um, perhaps feel the it's just nice positive energy and you know, education is a difficult field because we never stop. So, and there's, you know, generally children around, which is why we're here, but it doesn't allow us to really celebrate the adults in the same way as we would as other professions where you can just stop things for an hour at a company or something like that. You know, we don't, we, we can't do that. Um, but it was, it was great. We had really good attendance, particularly of the retirees and, um, and clerical media award winners and just really, really uh, enjoyed it and appreciate Hala for uh, being there at that event. But that, that's sort of all I had to share. I don't know, Hala, if you had 
not to put you on the spot, but if you had anything you wanted to share about that event, because we did appreciate your presence. Um, thank you, Dr. Morris. I thought it was a fabulous event. It really celebrated, showcased, and I learned a lot about um, some of our 30, been here 30 years, 25 years, five years, um, and the spirit felt great. I'm in great data, um, uh, sorry. I'm in a great deal of gratitude to all the educators and the staff and everyone who's kept our schools running this year. And that includes your leadership, Dr. Moore. So thank you for that event. I can't wait until next year. I'll put it on my calendar as soon as I know. <laughs> okay. Is that uh, all set? Okay. That was short, <laughs> short and sweet. Um, so next up is the chair's update. Um, and the one thing that um, I have uh, is about our uh, retreat. Um, so thank you for everybody who responded to the doodle poll that, um, that uh, Sasha sent out. Um, we will land on um, August 24th, which is Tuesday, still trying to finalize the exact time. Um, so uh, we'll confirm that as soon as possible. Um, one of the things that um, I also want to note, what I would like to get everybody's input on agenda and as well as a little bit of a self-evaluation um, for our committee. So I'll be sending that out in the next week. Um, beyond, like I'll do that before we all tune out for our well-deserved um, time away from each other. Um, but, uh, but look forward to seeing everybody back in, in August. Um, and so before we tune out, um, we'd like to get some input, both in terms of ideas for agenda for our retreat, as well as um, our own evaluation about our work together. So uh, with that, I'll turn, um, I'll see if there's any announcements from school committee members. I'm not seeing any. So moving right along to uh, new and continuing business. So we. Tonight, um, it used to be our only item, but we, 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 had, we added a few others um, <laughs> to our agenda, but our main item is uh, to discuss and uh, potentially vote on the superintendent evaluation. And um, we shared the summary memo um, two days ago, and it, it's also in our packets. Um, and so uh, Ms. Stancer, our vice chair, uh, worked with me in pulling this together and sort of drafting the overall comments uh, at the beginning. So um, I, I'll just say that we sort of using the same template that we've used before. I don't know who invented that template, but it's great. I, <laughs> I love the dots. Um, and I, um, so the, for the overall performance rating, we, we split um, pretty nice, nicely on the proficient or exemplary with five of us um, uh, giving Dr. Morris an overall rating of exemplary and three of proficient. Um, all of us on this call participate in the evaluation. Mr. Stammel, who just joined us in May, um, is the only member who did not participate. Um, and we also uh, gave an overall impact on student learning. Um, six of us uh, rated Dr. Morris high um, and two moderate. Um, the Ms. Stancer pulled out some really salient quotes um, from our comments throughout um, throughout the evaluation. Um, I won't read it. I think we can all read it on our own. And then at the back of the report, the memo are all of our overall comments. So with that, I want uh, with that overview, Ms. Stancer, is there anything you want to add? Um. So is it the case, is it included the, in the agenda? Um, I mean, for people to see if they want to see the full report that. Sorry, the, the, the full memo that we, that we drafted is in, mm -hmm. in the agenda packet. Is that your yeah. question? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I, I think if people want to actually see it, they can go to the ARPS website under school committees and go to the agenda for this meeting. Thank you. That's that's um, they they are linked there. I just checked that this afternoon. So, any comments or questions from the committee, Mr. Demling? So it's it's a funny thing. Um, 
the um, you know the overall content and conclusion of the evaluation, which which you both did an excellent job um, drafting, by the way, because it's not just the template. It's you know pulling the content together so it's representative of all the input. I think you did a really good job there. Um, it's it's totally not surprising because of of how many intensive meetings we've had with the superintendent <laughs> um, this year. Um, <clears throat> but it and but it, as Ms. Stancer noted, you know I, I would really encourage any member of the public to go and, and read that um, read that evaluation because it, it you know this this is one of the most important things that we do as a committee right which is you know oversee the superintendent um, uh, you know hiring the superintendent and then evaluating the superintendent and um, this is a really strong evaluation um, and uh, it, it really underscores something that we I think we probably say or we've certainly said every every year that I've been on the committee that we've done this evaluation which is Dr. Morris is just an exceptional match for, for what our community needs, for the complexity of our district, for, uh, for the intensive engagement level of our community, um, and for all the things that we value. Um, and it's, 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 I, I really just appreciate um, the fact that, you know, in, in Dr. Morris's um, uh, set of skills, I, I, you know, and, and there are many required for a superintendent, you know, from budget management and public engagement and leadership, staff, the, you know, stu all the list goes on. I, I feel like um, even even in the skills that aren't his top strengths, he's still very strong at. You know, I, and I feel like that's very unusual for a superintendent. You, a district is is lucky to have a superintendent. I think that that is strong in a few areas. And I feel like Dr. Morris is strong across the board and really exceptional in 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 a number of areas. Um, and, and there's so many things that, that he did this year that I, I, I don't want to go on forever. <laughs> um, so I, I just wanted to quote one thing that I, I was really um, impressed by the 360 survey that Dr. Morris shared with us. So this was the anonymous feedback from principals and other senior leadership at Central Office reviewing Dr. Morris and, and, and how he's impacted the district. And I, I found that really revealing because we see the superintendent from a, a, this governance overview relationship. On school committee, but we don't we don't get a chance to interact with him, and you know, in terms of uh, the day to day administrative operations and all that. And there was one quote I, I thought was great: Mike has done an incredible job of leading the districts throughout the pandemic. He has been proactive and creative in finding solutions to ensure that not only the educational but the social emotional needs of students and staff were met throughout this extended crisis period. He's been a truly inspiring leader. And you know, what more could you ask for that <laughs> than that? So. Um, you know, I, I, I really uh, I really appreciate the work that, that Dr. Morris has done this year. Um, I, I feel grateful that he is here. I'm uh, fortunate that our district, and I also am very happy that our committees were able to, uh, and Dr. Morris were able to renew our long-term commitment to each other this year with, with the contract extension. So um, it's been a very difficult year in a number of um, number of areas, um, but I'm, I'm very, very happy that we were able to go through this with Dr. Morris, so thank you. Any other other comments? Ms. Pitzer. Um, there is the memo and there is also the <laughs> everything that Peter uh, or Mr. Dumley said, you know, I'll second. Um, but I did just want to take this opportunity because this is um, you know the time of year where in an incredibly difficult year. I, so I think it's it's kind of interesting to look at um, the, the highly positive evaluations and knowing that, you know, it's been one of the most difficult years, um, I think that any school district, you know, all of the school districts in this country have gone through but because of the pandemic. And so I just, I want to take this opportunity to just say that I think there were times throughout the, just throughout the year where we fought, you know, unprecedented ch challenges. And I, I think, well, you know, with 2020 hindsight, maybe there are things that we should have done differently. And I'm sure that um, Dr. Morris feels that way. Like I never um, questioned his commitment to the district and his commitment to prioritizing the needs of our students, particularly our most at risk students, prioritizing our commitment to social equity or commitment to, you know, meeting the needs of all of our learners in a way that, um, you know, reflects our district's values. So I think for that reason, you know, I had, I had no hesitation, um, you know, with, with completing the evaluation in a very positive way. So I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you um, and express my gratitude for his leadership this year. 
and his willingness to continue on. I think, um, you know, I just point out that there, there's been a lot of press about kind of burnout and across fields, but particularly in education. So I think just recognizing how difficult this year was um, and, you know, how despite all those challenges, I, I feel like we were in good hands this year. Thank you. Ms. Lord. Thank you. In addition to dittoing what Ms. Spitzer or Mrs. Spitzer, I'm sorry, I don't know, and Mr. Dumling have said, um, one thing that really stands out that isn't necessarily on the evaluation is just the grace and the positivity um, that you exhibited, Dr. Morris. I remember there were some points in time where you and your team have worked well over 100 hours on something and then Desi changes it and boom, okay, we're gonna go do another 100 hours because this is all now something we can't do. And you just, um, you modeled for us how to roll with it how to acknowledge it, name it, but keep on going. And I just appreciate you holding our whole community, our students, our staff, us, everyone um, in that. So I do also encourage, I know this isn't the time, but for you to take a little time for yourself too. Okay, thanks. Very grateful. Ms. Stancer. Um, so many things that I have been said, I won't try to reiterate them, but one thing I would say is that um, I really appreciate the collaborative nature of the way Dr. Morris worked this year with everyone, us, but also with everybody, the staff, the teachers. Um, and something, it was a comment that I saw somewhere along the way that um, as a team and working together, we're really better than, than we could be. Um, you know, the sum is greater than the parts. And, and I think that he really enabled everybody to do their best this year. And I thank him for that. Mr. Harrington. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and back clean up here. And uh, so the, the, I guess the privilege that I have that, that nobody else here has, like Mr. Demling kind of alluded to it, is that I actually do get to see the day to day. And like, so, I generally try to separate things and like for the, the purposes of the evaluation, I absolutely approach it from this perspective, but I, I feel like you got to get like the whole picture. And it's the fact that like, so you have like the, the faith in, in leadership and the, in the faith in people. That's what I saw throughout this. And like, I keep hearing the word commitment. Let's think about it. This year sucked. Absolutely. <laughs> just sucked. If we're being honest, it was, it was like, but there were highlights, right? And, and there were a lot of the highlights were created by the fact that Mike didn't buckle under, or sorry, Dr. Morris didn't buckle under pressure, mm -hmm. that he was like steadfast in leadership. Mm -hmm. And then he asked for an extension under the worst possible circumstances. And I think like, I keep saying it, like that right there tells you about the level of commitment. If you're willing to keep going when times are the hardest, I hope that's the hardest that we have to deal with. But like, if you're willing to keep going when times are the hardest, that says a lot about you. Also, from the day-to-day -day perspective, to be able to look at somebody and, and like, you know that they have faith in you and you can have faith in them and you can move forward. We did impossible things this year. And Dr. Morris was at the head of that. So I just want to say thank you for that. Hmm. So um, you would not clean up. I'm, I'm the, the final, <laughs> final clean <laughs> But I don't have anything to add. You. Um, I would like plus 1000 everything that every every one of my colleagues have said. Um, and I think also just speaking as, as a chair, I mean, this, this, this was a year ago, the prior school year, but I remember I uh, was not chair, I was the acting chair. And I think it was right before graduation that you're like, we really need a chair. And um, with reluctance, I, I stepped up, but, um, but you have, um, you know, in terms of leadership with the with the staff, but also working with our committee, um, sort of that that spirit of collaboration and working together, um, and respect for um, the variety of opinions and approaches and perspectives that each of us on the committee brings. Um, not only is it you know, Ms. Spitzer referenced burnout and and sort of educators, particularly in the field of education. I think also in a crisis like this, 
the, the tensions and conflict that can arise when all of us are under such personal and professional pressure um, throughout this. And that, you know, as, as Mr. Harrington just alluded to, it didn't show up in your day-to-day -day work with your, with your team and, and the um, educators and staff, but it also didn't show up in relationship with our committee. Um, and that's not, that's another thing that you read about in the press is sort of those tensions across the state. And we, um, I think this, the spirit of collaboration and partnership that we've experienced throughout all of this has been tremendous. Um, and I'll add, I'll say that just writing this evaluation, um, while it was a joy to, to, to write and reflect on it, it also was exceedingly difficult because not only was it a really, really difficult year, but we, can, but you continued to work on some really big other big initiatives that had nothing to do with pandemic um, mm -hmm. and, and sort of reacting to that. So I, I think, you know, while we may not have made as much progress as we might have hoped on some of the some other some of these initiatives, we we added more to your plate and you ran with it. Um, and so I think, you know, exceedingly grateful to have have you, Dr. Morris, as as our superintendent and and um, you know, willing to extend uh, into into the future with with that, and I and I truly do look forward to um, our work together in future years. Um, with that, I would say let's. Um, uh, I will make a motion that we um, approve the evaluation as summarized in um, in our packet. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> moved by McDonald and seconded by Spitzer. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Mr. Demling. Demling, aye. Mr. Harrington. Harrington, aye. Ms. Lord. Lord, aye. Ms. Spitzer. Spitzer, aye. Ms. Stancer. Stancer, aye. And McDonald, aye. Um, the motion passes unanimously. One, two, three, six to zero. Um, Dr. Morris, is there anything you'd like to add? Yeah, um, I would. Uh, although this is talk about areas that are not my strength, like you're, you're entering into one. But um, I'm really humbled, and I mean that word authentically and honestly, by the but the evaluation of your words tonight. Um, you know, and Ms. Stancer heard me talk a little bit about this in Pelham just a couple minutes ago. Um, but I think what what when I reflected in putting together the artifact document, which is both like. Uh, it's this weird mix of a tremendous slog and also this incredible reflective tool, right? Uh, for myself to put that together uh, because it's a slog because, you know, we do so many things and what do you highlight and, and how do you, how do you work on that? And, and, you know, uh, superintendent's disposition is probably to think about the things that didn't go so well more than the things that, that went so well, um, or at least as mine as superintendent um, when I'm reflecting on my own work. And so, I think what uh, what I reflected on as I was putting together the documents was um, superintendents have this phrase this, these days that pivot is a four letter word, right? Because how many times did Desi something change? And right, and that's not out to you know blame Desi or blame anyone. It was a pandemic, right? There were unpredictable things that were going to happen. Guidance was going to change more rapidly, uh, you know, uh, than any organization was able to sort of manage it. When I look back though, you know, the thing that makes me feel heartened is how much collaboration occurred both with, within this committee as well as the committee and staff, not just myself, but thinking of Doreen and Doug and, and Tim and other people who, and Katie uh, who presented uh, for, with the regional school committee. And it's not to say there was always agreement, right? We can all go to those places where uh, there were some difficult meetings um, that we had both within ourselves and others. Um, but, but at the same time, I think the dialogue was always focused on how do we do what's what's best for kids in this environment that no one could have predicted? And, and I agree that, you know, hindsight's 2020 is definitely things we would do differently, but at the same time, what I wouldn't do differently is the level of collaboration uh, that the committee has with each other, um, the number of engagements we had. Um, and I also, to the burnout question, I think it's an important one. You know, um, I, you know, I hope the committee takes it, takes some time off this July as well. Right, it's um, this is my job. Right, um, this is this is not other people's jobs. This is a, a you know volunteer or, or close to volunteer, um, you know responsibility we've all taken because care about our students. Right, there, there's no 
if anyone thought that they would do this because of glory, I think that that ship has long sailed for for this body, right? Um, I don't think that's in the cards. Um, so, I, I, you know, I appreciate that, and we're working internally. I took a couple of days this week, and really encouraging people to take time. And when they take time, to really take time, like turn their ARPS email off, have their phone be a phone, and not something else, not a work device. Uh, you know, uh, novel concepts like that. But I think that goes to the committee as well. And and I think, um, you know, I have the benefit. I've said this before. I have the benefit of seeing, uh, and Mr. Harrington talked about it a little bit too, the really wonderful moments. Right, I get to be in classrooms and see students learning. You know, Miss Lord, thank you for coming to that event, and Miss McDonald was, and others, uh, Miss Lord, and and uh, people in different capacities came to graduation. Uh, so, so I get the the sort of the fuel uh, from seeing things that the committee itself doesn't get to see. Um, so, I, I would encourage you all to take your own advice to a certain extent. You know, um, to take a little time to recharge. We'll get back to it in August. We'll have lots to do. Um, so there's no concerns there that there won't be things waiting. Uh, but I do think it's really important because you've all had more school committee meetings uh, in the last 14 months or 15 months uh, than, than I think in any period prior. That's my guess. I have no data. I didn't look it up. But I can't imagine that there was that many public meetings, uh, non-executive session meetings uh, in, in that time period. And uh, the reality is we do need to refresh because we will have students coming back on August 30th and they're relying on us collectively as the leadership of the district uh, to have things ready to go for them. So um, I guess uh, I just want to close by saying thank you. Uh, appreciate the collaboration, appreciate the kind words. And um, I, I do think everybody needs to, you know, whether it's seeing their family, friends, being outside more, whatever it is, that's the important thing to you that you've donated a lot. Um, you've, you've sacrificed, that's the word I'll use. Uh, a lot of that over the last 15 months, um, you know, that doesn't go away, or at least I hope it doesn't for everybody. That'd be sad to me. Um, but uh, but I do think it, it's something that people do need to take stock of um, taking some time for themselves and their family over the next month. And same thing I'm telling my administrative team, uh, they don't love hearing it, um, which is, that's my problem, not yours. But, you know, we keep on pushing for people to to really take time for themselves because, you know, you, we all know what the result of not doing that is. Um, and it's not in students' best interest, not in adults' best interest, certainly not in people's self-interest, but in terms of running a healthy organization, uh, I think it's really important. And, you know, as essentially the trustees of the organization, I just hope you all um, do that as well. But sorry, it's a little more long-winded than, than I thought. Uh, extend, you know, Pelham was a little briefer. Sorry, Margaret. Um, we are a little under more of a time crunch in Pelham. Um, but, you know, really appreciate the collaboration, uh, the partnership, and the disagreements and the way we dis disagree on this group. Uh, all that is incredibly welcomed, and I think it really promotes the organization that we want to be, and I think models the organization we want to be. So thank you all for your work, and I'll, I'll leave it there. Thank you. Uh, so without um, anything more on that, um, we'll move on to our next item, which is um, riveting policy um, discussion. Uh, so we have, uh, it's our second read and possible vote on two um, policies. One is a revision of our subcommittee policy, BDE, and one is a new policy, BDF, on advisory committees. Um, and the uh, documents are in our packet. Um, so the policy subcommittee did meet after our first read and went through um, the comments and suggested edits coming from our first read and there were no changes made to bdf the advisor committee to the school committee um, and on bde the subcommittees um the change the edits that we made um, based on feedback and discussion at the last meeting on the subcommittee um, are highlighted i think it, that's red um so the first line um, Mr. Demling had suggested giving ourselves a little bit of flexibility about um, the annual organizational meeting, so we just changed that to annually. Um, and under uh, further down, um, because we had collapsed budget and audit into one committee, one subcommittee, we changed four to three and changed in that line core characters to core charges. Uh, Ms. Spitzer is on the subcommittee um, with me. Is there anything that we didn't, that you want to add? No, thanks for checking. Any comments or questions? Let's 
seeing none, um, would somebody like to make a motion? Mr. Dunley. I move to approve policy BDF as presented. I'm sorry. Um, could I could I start that over? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> I move. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I'm not ready to make a motion. Um, I'm I'm forgetting now whether we had um, other much different versions of these policies in the past. And so, are we proposing these as new policies or as major revisions to the current? Uh, so, uh, great question. BDE is a uh, um, is a revision to an existing policy BDE. Um, and I can pull up and show you what we changed from for the first read, if you would like. What no, I no, no, I just wanted to, I, I couldn't, I, re I remembered the one of them was a major revision, the other one was new, so I just. Correct, so BDE subcommittees is a major revision to an existing policy, and BDF is a new policy. Um, and the major change was to pull out the reference to task forces um, and non school committee members being members of subcommittees. And so we created the advisory committees as the avenue for having non-school committee member participation um, in, in these committees. Mr. Demley. I move to approve policy BDF advisory committees to the school committee as presented. And I'll second that. Is there a uh, move by Demling, seconded by McDonald? Is there further discussion on BDF? Welcome, Ms. Kenny. If there's no further discussion, we'll move to a roll call vote. We are voting on policy BDF as presented. That's the motion on the table um, or on the screen. Um, Mr. Demling. Demling, aye. Mr. Harrington. Eric and I. Ms. Kenny? I am going to abstain only because I just walked in. Yeah. Ms. Lord? <laughs> oh, Lord, I. Ms. Spitzer? Spitzer, I. Ms. Stancer? Stancer, I. And McDonald's, I. The motion passes six, uh, six to zero with one abstention. I will move, make a motion now that we approve policy BDE subcommittees um, as, as presented. Second. second. Um, moved by McDonald and seconded by Stancer. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Mr. Demling? Demling, aye. Mr. Harrington? Harrington, aye. Ms. Kenny? I'm going to abstain from this one as well. Same thing, just locked in. Ms. Lord? Lord, aye. Ms. Spitzer? Spitzer, aye. Ms. Stancer? Stancer, aye. And McDonald, aye. And that motion passes six to zero with one extension. And next up, we have a proposal um, on a um, uh, public comment submission to the state legislature on special education funding. Um, there was a call from, I think we all received that um, email from Senator Com Joe Comerford's office um, requesting that school districts um, weigh in on, um, on this matter. And I am going, Mr. Demling has done some work and some research. Thank you to Dr. Slaughter and Dr. Morris for helping out on that. Um, and so that's in our packet is the, the proposed public comment that we would submit um, as on behalf of our committee. And Mr. Demling, would you like to introduce it? Or sure. Like so I, I think, so I, I emailed the draft to the uh, committee. I don't, I don't know if it got into the packet though. No, I think I may have not. forgotten to uh, include its email it to our clerk. So that was my fault. Um, so I don't, so I can, I can, I, I can just, yeah, yeah, you want, I can, let me find it. Um, so yeah, while you're doing that, I can just kind of set the overview. So like you said, Senator Comerford, um, made a, a call for input last week. So this is a bill, uh, S 295, uh, that she, uh, has 
um, drafted and is getting a hearing with the Joint Committee on Education next Tuesday. Uh, and and uh, basically what this bill is, is that it would establish a commission to review the Commonwealth system for financing special education and make recommendations for a more equitable system. That's, that's straight out of the bill's text. Um, and, um, and really, there's, you know, we talk about state funding of special education, you're talking about Chapter 70 foundation aid, uh, as well as um, some other items uh, like, like circuit breaker. And so um, I talked to, we had had actually a pretty robust discussion a couple of years ago in the run up to the Student Opportunity Act, um, which was a wide ranging bill looking at many aspects of state education funding. Um, and so, you know, thank you to um, not only Dr. Morrison, Dr. Slaughter, but, um, um, Sean Mangano, who used to be our finance director, now works for the town of Amherst, um, also had some input on this. Um, so, so again, so this is to this is a bill to establish the commission. It's not uh, a bill to make specific changes yet. So, so really, the input is well, well, why should there be a commission? What's what is potentially amiss with current special education funding, and and what, what what's the motivation now? And um, you know, really the 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 argument here that I, I try to capture is kind of twofold. You know, one is um, if if you underfund special education to 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 a significant degree, then you create this very problematic pressure for school districts, where if they don't have the money to fund those services, then they then they have to take it from somewhere because budgeting is this very difficult zero sum game, um, or, or you shortchange special needs students. Um, and when the state funding is lower than it should be, then that falls um, to the local community to to shore up. Um, and the local a local community's resources are dependent on that local community, right? Some communities have more resources than others, um, or have you know just the more political will to provide that, which is which is just very fundamentally wrong. You know? And so um, you know that that's that's one. Thing that the, a, a commission should be looking at is is smoothing out that 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 equity, so that if there are you don't put districts in a position of gee, do I fund services for an intensive special needs student or, you know, do I cut the budget elsewhere? Um, you know, there's also um, ways in which circuit breaker is managed that are highly problematic. Um, you know, for the public that's not aware, the thumbnail sketch for circuit breakers. If you have a very high expenses for special needs. Uh, student services. After a certain point, the state is supposed to cover three quarters of that. Um, and um, a couple of the problems that that this memo tries to point out is, one, it even if they're qualified expenses, it doesn't always get covered because it is subject to appropriation, which is this very frustrating loophole <laughs> that the legislature uses on this and some other line items to basically not fund it if, if it doesn't want to. And um, you know, the paragraph in there expresses a fair bit of frustration um, that I've experienced in the last several years that, um, you know, that, that we really need to, uh, you know, organize this advocacy effort every year to ask the legislature to fund what the Mass General Law says it's supposed to fund. <laughs> and I can get that with some nice to have services, but I, I it's very difficult to, to square with services for intensive special needs students and you know and that you make school committees and uh, local officials and residents you know have to engage in that process um, is, is is something is is a, it's a discussion that should be had thus the need for the commission and there's also some technicalities about uh, how circuit breaker uh, what costs it cover for example um, it does not cover the full uh, cost of benefits for if you need say an additional uh, aid for a student uh, and whatnot, and it's you know, so you, you want to cover the uh, be uh, sufficient in covering expenses and reliable, and it and it's neither. Um, and this, so this is just asking the state to um, not to adopt any specific changes yet, but to but to uh, endorse the commission so that we can start looking at these things. And uh, that's where that is. Any questions? Seeing none, um, I um, thank you, Mr. Demling, for doing this this work. It was 
you turned it around on a dime. So um, really appreciate that to get it in um, in a timely fashion. Um, so we're not meeting again until the end of August. Um, so I will I'll move that we um, that we endorse this or uh, support this this resolution um, and approve it. Is there a second? I would second it, and I was also, along with that, like to say thank you to Mr. Demling for putting this together. And it would be great if we could get the state to appropriate the funds that they legislate. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, we'll um, roll call vote. Mr. Demling. Uh, Demling, aye. Mr. Harrington. Harrington, aye. Ms. Kenny. Kenny, aye. Ms. Lord. Lord, aye. Ms. Spitzer. Spitzer, aye. Ms. Stancer. Stancer, aye. And McDonald, aye. The motion passes unanimously, seven to zero. Thank you. And uh, next up is a warrant report. Um, Ms. Spitzer, do you have warrants to, sh to report? I do indeed. Um, I think I have four. So I, Carrie Spitzer, authorized by my signature to payables in the amount of $650,968.55 for the warrant dated June 11th, 2021. This included general fund expenses of $522,082.01, revolving fund expenses of $76,610.53, and grant fund expenses of 51,500. I think that's it. Yeah, sorry, I'm having trouble reading the handwriting. $51,576.01 and other fund expenses of $400 for gifts. Um, I signed this on June 15th, 2021. Hi, Carrie Spitzer, authorized by my signature to scholarship warrants in the amount of $4,050 for the warrant dated June 16th, 2021. And this was um, included other fund expenses in the amount of $4,050. Um, this was signed up by me on June 17th, 2021. I, Carrie Spitzer, authorized by my signature to payables in the amount of $186,054.67 for the warrant dated June 17th, 2021. This included general fund expenses of $176,598.69, revolving fund expenses of $49.09, and grand fund expenses of $9,406.89. And this was signed by me on June 20th, 2021. I, Carrie Spitzer, authorized by my signature to payables in the amount of $259,653.53 for the warrant dated June 28th, 2021. This included general fund expenses of $228,095.90, revolving fund expenses of $15,408.76, grant fund expenses of $10,889.82, and other funds for capital in the amount of $5,000. $259.05, and this was signed by me on June 25th, 2021. That's it. Thank you. Next up, we have gifts, and we do have a few to um, prove. Uh, so I will make a motion that we accept the following gifts um, from anonymous number 3335 to support community building awards to each um, at $250 for a total of $500. From Anonymous Fidelity Donor Advice Fund to support the ARPS Family Center in the amount of $2,000. From Sandra and Brett McDowell to support District Student Lunch Forgiveness in the amount of $189.25. And um, for a total uh, gift amount of $2,689.25. And also, um, to accept a grant from Project Red number 20061515 to support 2021 Summer Eats for student summer meals in the amount of $500. Is there a second? Second. Moved by McDonald, seconded by Spitzer. Any discussion? 
Seeing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Mr. Demling. Demling, aye. Mr. Harrington. Harrington, aye. Ms. Kenny. Kenny, aye. Ms. Lord. Lord, aye. Ms. Spitzer. Spitzer, aye. Ms. Stancer. Stancer, aye. And McDonald, aye. The motion passes unanimously, seven to zero. And now I'm going to um, make a motion um, that we enter into executive session according to MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21.3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining with the APEA. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body and the chair so declares, and I declare, with no intention of returning to open session. Is there a second? Second. Uh, moved by McDonald, seconded by Spitzer. We'll take a roll call vote. Mr. Demling. Demling, aye. Mr. Harrington. Harrington, aye. Ms. Kenny. Kenny, aye. Ms. Lord. Lord, aye. Ms. Spitzer. Spitzer, aye. Ms. Stancer. Stancer, aye. And McDonald, aye. Um, so we will now move into executive session.